So we were at the Michu Assembly Facility. Is that what's that? Is that where we're going? That big building there. That's building what's inside of that building? There's a tank inside of that building. There's a, an external tank that yes. has the it carries the fuel for the space shuttle. That's right. For the main engines, so they put the thing together here, right. and then the barge takes it over to uh, the Kennedy Space Center, so it can be hooked up with the shuttle and then right. go to space. Right. All right. So this is it. Tanks inside of there. Yeah, it is a better view. You can see that over there. What's amazing is you built, you know, one of the amazing things, there's lots of amazing things. One is how it, it uh, combines the propellants and feeds the main engines of the shuttle, right? And of course, the foam that's on the outside, because it's liquid hydrogen oxygen, it's got, it's got to be cool, right? So you have this, because it's a liquid form, which means, what, what's the temperature of this stuff inside of there when you? Oh, it's, uh, it's cold, let's see. right? Yes, the liquid hydrogen, or the liquid oxygen here, I believe, is negative 297. Negative 297 degrees Fahrenheit? Right. That's yeah. cold. Yeah, remember when you used, to, remember you used to stick your lips on a, on a, on a fence yeah. when you were a kid? It's colder than that. But hydrogen. <laughs> It's colder than like even in Canada. Oh, yeah. Like we're down here in Mississippi where it's kind of warm. But you start traveling like in New York, it never gets that cold. It's really cold. All right, so go ahead. Now, what, now what's next? Hydrogen is, uh, is what? negative 423. You're kidding. You're making that up, Harry. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so this is really cold stuff. Oh, yeah. So you have that insulation to keep it cold. Right? It's like a, it's like a yes. really good. Uh, yeah, you also want to keep the ice from foaming around. The, it. Exactly. Go ahead, so go ahead, Lee. What is exactly. This? Yeah, you, you don't want you don't want ice forming on this thing. No ice neither. So uh, so this is the, the material that you use for insulation. Yeah, is really important. The foam, which is about one inch thick, which is right. part of the thermal protection system. You know, it protects the tank in mm -hmm. two ways. It's sitting out there on the launch pad six weeks, four weeks, mm -hmm. you know, before launch. Right. So. Any kind of weather, depending on the year, if it's oh, in yeah, January, all kinds of stuff. you know. It was somebody uh, at hail. They took hail damage on one of And when they start putting these, you know, cryogenic fuels in here that are extremely cold, right. well, the natural, you know, role of of components is to grow ice, and so this protects against that. The foam protects against ice and frost and those very cold ingredients when they start filling the tank up, which takes three hours prior to launching, but also, and then when they launch, you know, so the temperature meter is way over here on the cold side, but when they launch, it swings, you know, when you fire the engines, mm -hmm. the foam helps you that way too, because now you're looking at 2,000 degrees, 2,500 right, degrees, right. and the foam is protecting the tank there. Right. I mean, you remember seeing all those uh, those Apollo uh, videos when uh, at liftoff, all the right, ice breaking off? Right. You, you wouldn't want that coming no, off. In because a, the problem it, is it could damage the shuttle. That's right. That's the problem. So that's what Lee was talking about before with the ice. We don't want that coming off. On Apollo, that was okay because it, you, know, no you didn't have to wear it. But with ours, you have, you have to protect the thermal protection system of the of the shuttle, so you can't have any engine. So it's a very tricky engineering problem. Guys. So Harry, this, this, you know, this line right here, why don't you describe that if you, you know, this, uh, yeah. This looks like a cable line or something like that? Pressurization line. Uh -huh. and, and, and that, that, that's part of the pressurization system. Runs all the way through the aft umbilical, runs through your engine assemblies, and keeps a, press, uh, a pressure on the, uh, goes from the aft order all the way to the... You, you can see the pressurization line. line here that we're looking at right here on the uh, for the oxygen uh, tank. But the, then the uh, like kind of a rectangular, uh, that's a cable tray, right? Yeah, that's basically your liquid level sensor in, in, interconnects. Okay. Uh, your temp sensor for the nose cone aspects, your uh, li liquid levels and uh, 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 vent valve actuation uh, signals and things like that. And then that big old, what's the, how big is it, would you say that, that big uh, LO2 feed line is there, Rick? Yeah, the, the, that's one of the, comp that's one of our uh, ablator coated fairings, and that's the one that they put the camera in. This, Get yeah, yeah. That, oh, that's that's right. And how how big is that feed line that's going on to the uh, seventeen inch seventeen inch uh, feed line? Yeah. If this tank is about to roll, and about twenty four hours from now, this tank will be finished, and then we will roll it one mile to the harbor, to the Mishu Harbor, uh, Deepwater Harbor, and the barge will meet it there, Pegasus, the barge, and we'll roll it onto the barge 
and then we take it to Gulfport where the Freedom Star, the, the solid rocket booster retrieval ship is waiting on it mm -hmm. and it will take it five days, tow it across the Gulf of Mexico, around Key West. Yeah, it goes the, all the way around. Huh? Up the Atlantic side of Florida to the Banana yeah, it'd be River. Nice if there's some kind of intercoastal going cut across the... Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. All the way around. Yeah, well, it, they closed... Well, they closed uh, Mr. Go. That was a shortcut they had. Yeah. That's yeah. why they had the main... They blamed the main flood, so they closed that, so they can't go down there. The so Mississippi River Golf Outlet, Mr. Go. Mississippi oh, River okay. Golf Outlet. Mm. That was a straight 85-mile shot from here to the Gulf of Mexico. And that that let us get the tanks to Kennedy Space Center one day earlier. Now we have to go down the Intercoastal Canal, okay. as Rick was saying. So it's, it's just added one day to the trip. All right. And there's a tank right there. Is this one ready to go outside yet or no? Yes. It is, Tomorrow okay. Morning. All right, we're going to go take a look. Be careful. We're pretty close. I mean, it's hard to get an idea of how big, but it's huge. Oh, yeah. But we're just seeing just the top part of it right now. 15 stories tall. 15 stories tall. There's, uh, there's a lot riding on this thing. There's a whole lot. A big, riding. expensive space shuttle and people inside of it. Well, that's the most important part of it. The people inside of it. I like to hear you say that. A good man. <laughs> well, we do it for you guys. Well, well thanks. You know? Um, we appreciate it. And it doesn't leave here until it's ready. Right. That's a great, that's the attitude around here, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know if people really appreciate that, the dedication that you everybody a, has down here. you got a good workforce here. Yeah. That has been dedicated for many years. Right. And I'm not sure if everyone understands that, because you know, this is a very critical uh, piece of equipment here, this giant tank with all the fuel in it, and we got to make sure it works right. We're, uh, we're going to really be sad when we get down to the last one. Yeah. But, you know, all good things must come to an end, I guess. Apparently so. <laughs> Apparently so. So, we'll see. This is not the last one, though? No. This is the second to no, last this one. this is the second to the, the last third one. Third last one, isn't it? I thought this was, someone said this is the third to last well, one. Well, we have um, ET-122, which got damaged in the VAB back in uh, Hurricane Katrina, and it's our resurrection tank. Is so, that going to so, be the launch on need tank? Yes. Yeah. So this is. Where's this? Who's this one for? You got you got this one and one other one before the launch on need tank, right? Yes. All right. So this this one is destined for the next mission that goes after STS-132. And everything looks good so far. You happy yeah, with the way this one's turning out? Oh yeah, it looks great. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you're getting everything just nice, so you don't have any anything flying off the tank and hitting the shuttle. You want it to be perfect. And what are the tools you're using? You're a master uh, machinist, I'm telling you. Is that right? Yeah. And you're working with. Uh, these tools to do it. So these these tools is what what, what makes this high tech tank work. My hands. Your hands. Your hands. That's, that's awesome. Let me ask you a question. Why you what do you want to know? Two missions. Why you have one patch? What do you mean? Well, I got one here, mm -hmm. and then I got other flight suits with the other one. We're only supposed to have one at a time. So many. You know what happened? Because some guys have a, like show offs. They put a bunch of patches on themselves <laughs> below. So every mission you get a new uniform. Uh, yeah, you get a new flight suit. Okay. But sometimes you get a little bigger, you know? As you get older and you start eating more. I don't know, you, you know, you're, you're in good shape. But, you know, for us, you come back from space, you start eating, and the next thing you know, hey, you, you need a new flight space? suit. How long you uh, only, I only go for two weeks at a time. Both of my flights are about two weeks. Yeah. So, but that's, and what else? You got any other questions? Those are pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How long have you been with your program? I've been here for, uh, I've been here 14 years. 1996. How long have yeah. you been here, Vernon? 29. 29. Yeah. So you've been here for the whole thing. Hey. For the whole shuttle program, haven't you? From the first flight. From the first one. Every one of them you've worked on. Wow. We're headed down to the water. We're headed to the water. Because that's where the barge is. So the process that happens here, Harry, is that you build this fancy tank that we see inside. Yes, sir. And then you put it on some kind of truck or something. What do you do with it? You put it, on, put it a, on a transporter. On a transporter. And we bring it very slowly, going about one mile an hour. Up this right. road. Takes, it takes right up the same road, right? Yep. Because here it is. Right. Oh, yep. and this is the road we just took. And look at it. This is it. And then it goes inside of that thing? Yes, that's the Can we drive right in there, right? That's the <laughs> we drive our car right in there, <laughs> and maybe we go to... All right. All right. But this is, what do you call it? Uh, this is Pegasus. This Pegasus? Is enclosed barge. Wow. It has its own crew, the barge does. And okay. And will accompany it. Of course, the barge has no propulsion, so it has to be towed. All right. And a... Uh, uh, Freedom Star, one of the solid rocket booster retrieval ships, will tow it. It's not here yet, is it? It, it is not here. Okay. Because 
they're building this big rock wall and it's a little too big of a ship for mm -hmm. the intercoastal canal so we'll have two ocean going barges uh tugs excuse me just take it down to gulfport and then uh and then when's it when does it pull away from here it takes about four to six hours to fasten it down and to get ready to make sure it's secure and everything and then it'll there roll, it is and it's 12 hours to gulfport so will they will this thing push away on saturday afternoon yes Yes, it will. That's our plan. So they drive the transporter right on here? Yes, they do. All right. Uh, they certainly do. And uh, it will stay on the transporter, you know, until until it gets to the vertical vehicle assembly building at Kennedy Space Center. Oh, huh. big barge, don't you think? Sure, it looks like they just uh, swabbed the deck here, too. Yeah, it looks nice and clean. Yeah.